Ah, what was you mentioning? Why am I looking like this? <laughs> oh my god, I look different to myself. It's been a while I've checked myself on videos. Maybe that's why I'm feeling like this. I look different. Good evening, thanks for joining me. I appreciate. Yeah. Good evening. I appreciate everyone coming online. For a while, I've not been coming online. Why do I look different? What happened? <laughs> is it because it's been a while? Or is this me naturally? Ah, I can't believe this. What's going on? I don't know, Jari. Mm. Yeah, so how has it been? How is life? How is family? Today I decided to change my dress. Those two clothes I'm always wearing. What is soon? So today I'm, I changed my dress to my medical scrub. So, and it's good. Change of looks is. It's good sometimes. You don't have to always look the same way. So, today's topic is a very unique topic. Very, very strong topic. And, uh, of course, most of our topics, they are... How do I put it? Should I say soul lifting or... They are usually... Ah, how come I look very different? Could it be that... Ha, get to me. I Ha. Ha, ha. Are you about? Ha, this. Oh, is the look is so good like that? Because I don't understand how my face looks. I don't even understand. It's been a while I've checked myself in videos like this. But every time that I'm okay, no problem. Even if you don't tell me, I know that I'm okay. <laughs> so, like I said, most of our videos are, I think, let me increase the brightness. Most of our videos are usually dealing with issues with what is really going on. So, but today's topic also is also one of it. And I'm grateful to God. You know, it even got to a time, because it's been a while I've come online, I know that, that I started thinking to myself, how come I don't even have topics again? And when God gave me that topic, I was happy, because you understand now, I have to wait on God for topics nowadays. And that's better, it's much better than just coming online for jokes, my page is not for joking. A lot of people go online. Some people will go online to start entertaining people with their body, all those kind of things. My my page is not for that. My page is for speaking the word of God to people. And I'm glad to be a part of that. So, and if I want to maintain that, I need to always wait on the Lord for everything so i'm grateful to god he gave me a topic and i'm so excited about it really i'm very much excited i think by god's grace i will still write a book on this topic 
what is marriage. Many people don't understand it. But before we continue, let's pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we are grateful. Thank you for your greatness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you because you stand on your promises. And you have not failed your promises upon our lives all this while. Accept our praises and thanks in Jesus' name. Father, I am very grateful for your promises that thousands shall fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. You said only with our ears we will hear it and our hearts we will see, but it will not come near us. That is what you have been doing for us all this while. As much as the news of this pandemic is going on, Father, you have protected us. You have protected our family members. No evil befall us. Father, it is you, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because you have even been feeding us. A lot of people have lost their job during this time, but you are still God and you are taking care of us. Father, we are so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Before we call on you, you answer us. Father, we are grateful. Thank you, Lord, because you rule in the affairs of men. Thank you because you are great. Thank you for your faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, the mercy I see. All I have needed, thy hands has provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto us. Father, we are grateful. Accept our praises, O Lord. Accept our thanks, O Lord. Father, we can't thank you enough. Thank you, Lord, for good health. Thank you for healing. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we are grateful. You didn't allow any evil to befall us. Father, Lord, there is evil here and there, but you have protected us and our family members. Those people that evil can befall them and it will, and we will be so touched about it. Father, you have not allowed evil to befall them. Father, we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, but oh, you didn't allow the will of the enemy to, to come to pass in our life. All those who are planning evil against us, Father, they are the ones that have been taken away by their own evils. Oh, Father, we are grateful. It is not by our power. It is not by our might. Oh, Lord, I said that thanks and praises in Jesus' name. That passage of the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8. It says in Yoruba, any toban wai wu, funare luma jisinwe, uli any toban, toban, ja igbo, toban shon igbo, ni ejo luma bushon. Verse 9 now says that, um, any toban yi okuta, bo, ulo, ma, le wunye ma wu, father, lo, that is what you have been doing. In our lives. Father, all the enemies that are planning evil against us, their evils are going back to their heads. I said that thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we are grateful. Father, even sometimes we don't even know about those things that they are planning. But you are protecting us and guiding us. Father, Lord, you are guiding our steps to greatness and to fulfillness, to fulfillness and to protection. Father, we are grateful. Be that magnified in Jesus' name. Be that glorified in Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you for all the videos you have been doing since all this while. Father, Lord, for the topics. Oh, Lord, and for the testimonies we have been hearing about the topics. Father, I said our praises and thanks in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, we are grateful. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for even the last topic. Father, Lord, as much as I didn't know anything about men, Father, you didn't leave me alone and you took the preeminence control. 
Blessed be thy holy name in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we now come unto you. For everything we have committed, oh Lord, that you not allow us to have your favor upon our lives again. Father, please come and forgive us. Oh Lord, come and forgive us. Anything that I have committed, oh Lord, that you will look down on me and you will not move through me and you will not speak through me. Father, please forgive me. Anything in my life that will not allow you to use me for your glory, Father, please forgive me. Oh Lord, I come unto you today. Father, come and put your words in my mouth. Father, come and give me your trances. Father, Lord, I want you to fill my mouth today. Father, I want you to put your words in my mouth. Father, Lord, many of these things, I don't even know them. But I rely on you, O Lord. I rely on your inspiration. I rely on the Holy Spirit. I rely on your guidance. Father, please come and direct me. Oh Lord, put your words in my mouth. Father, Lord, everybody that will come online or those that will watch these videos later, Father, Lord, I want you, Lord, to, to put your words in my mouth as we speak to their situations at the right places and at the right times in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are good. Thank you, Lord, because you are faithful. Thank you because you will do it again. Father, Lord, at the end of this video, we want to glorify your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let me say hi to everybody that are online. Mm -hmm. You see, before, before I got this topic yesterday, I can't really call it evening like that. In the night. I got this topic in the night, so... So, in the morning of yesterday, I was I was praying, and one song came to my mind. I sang it, and I was so happy that I sang it. That in fact, I I had a man that I was going to come online to do singing, but instead of that, I didn't come for singing. So I I am coming for a topic. But notwithstanding, I still have the mind to sing the song because I love it when I sang it. I love how my voice was sounding when I was singing it. Oh. Uh, the song is um, Eo Iyo Ayo. It's usually conducted by Brother Agbaji when I was in Akure. And I like the way he conducts the song. So I'm going to sing it right now. Are you ready? Eo iyo ayo Si olorun wa Eni le gogo Eni le gogo Eo iyo Emi yo si kori inyi 
soru kore oga ogu oga ogu oga ogu emi yo fi go go oko mi yo luwa emi yo fi go go oko mi yo luwa emi yo si kori inyi soru kore oga ogu oga ogu oga ogu Amen. This song is a beautiful song. I, I, I actually like the way my voice was rising, coming, rising, coming. Let me sing it again. Eh, oh, yo, yo, ah, see, all ah, eh, ah, Eh, legugbo, e kori inyi, si oloru, e kori inyi, si obawa, e kori inyi, si metalokon, ni tori gugbo aratoshe, ni tori oloru. Oh, love, I ye. I feel ye. I feel ye. I feel ye. Cory. Amy, you feel go, oh, come in your lua. Amy, you feel go, oh, come in your lua. Amy, you see, Cory. Oga ogu, oga ogu, oga ogu. Amen. The psalm says, "Bless the Lord." Yeah. Chai. See how my, see my leg is bending me. Yeah. Just the way I bent my leg. That's why. Uh -huh. The psalm says, "Bless the Lord of my soul." I forget not all His goodness. You know, it is very, very, very easy for us as human beings to forget the goodness of God. Sometimes we find ourselves in some situations and we will be like, God, are you even existing at all? I've watched some movies where some people will be like, ah, I don't think there is God though. Because if there is God, he will not allow these kind of things to be happening to me. You understand? We say a lot of things when we are in troubles because we, we as human beings, we can't take much of troubles. It weighs us down. It affects our mind. It affects our emotions, the brain, heart, blood. Everything is affected. So we can't really take it. That's why, that's why most of the things we say, it's not as if we sometimes... People really want to say it, but it's just what they are going through that is making them say. But what Samus advised us to do is, bless the Lord of my soul. Even at those situations where you, you cannot even see anything, when you cannot even see the light, when you cannot see anything. If God can command light, when the whole world was full of darkness and and there was light. The Bible says, the Lord, and God said, let there be light and there was light. That is to tell you there's nothing it cannot do. Even if all you are seeing around you is darkness and you are worried, you are troubled, and you are even worried that God is not doing anything about it. You know, sometimes we get to that situation and we'll be like, God, and you are seeing what is going on around me. Why can't you do something about it? The psalmist advised us that we should bless the Lord. We should not forget all his kindness. You understand? Even when the situation... It's difficult. Even when it's so difficult to even praise, God still wants us to praise Him. 
because he's still faithful. He's still faithful. His faithfulness is ever more. Even those situations that you are looking at it like, God, this is insane. God is still faithful. God is still faithful. And even that situation you are looking at, you will still turn it around. And I still want you to believe that if he has done if he has done some great things in our lives in the past, then you can be sure that he will still do more. For me, the Lord has surprised me in many ways. He has showed up in my life in times that even people around me never thought anything could happen again. You understand? And I'm sure that every one of us has that kind of situation in our lives. So why won't we praise Him? He said, forget not all His goodness. Those times that it's difficult to praise, that is the time God wants you to praise. That is the time God wants you to praise Him more. Because he, that is the time you should remember more His kindness. That is the time you should remember more His goodness. You see the reason why God was always angry with the Israelites was because they forget so quickly those wonders God has done. And the wonders are not ordinary things. They are not normal things that happen. They were miracles. I'm feeling cold though. So I said, I'll go and bring my doobie now. Ah, this kind of weather is this one now. <laughs> the weather is cold. It will be cold, it will be warm at the same time. I don't get See everything I they wear now. I even wear socks, joints, say. And I see they feel cold. Ah, ah, go, share go, go. You understand what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's it. So... God is ever faithful. Let us read our God's mind. Praise the Lord for His kind. For His mercies endure. Ever faithful, ever sure. Ever faithful, ever sure. Ejeka finu didu ni oluwa oluri ko soju mi na anure yo watiti maybe it's because i didn't make my actually i washed this year and i didn't put any cream maybe that's why and i've been pouring water Lo do do da ju da ju lo do do da ju da ju Amen. So that's it. So I want to go into the video. People are people are. I see many people watching, but on this live thing, I didn't see anybody, so I don't really know if people are online. But notwithstanding, I know. I'm still going to repost it on YouTube, so I know I'll still have views there, then I'll still post it on my Facebook also, so I'm sure many people, even if they're not online, they will still watch. So by God's grace, we have prayed, and I'm sure that the Holy Spirit is around us, and He will lead us through. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And um, we want to go into the topic. So the topic is, what is marriage? And like I said, I, I think... By God's grace, God wants me to also write it into a book. Because what I have noticed is that most of these things I'm always coming online to talk about. They are real life issues. They are things that are actually happening in people's lives. Many people are making a lot of mistakes. You see, we can't... We can't... You can't do some things outside of God's plans or God's directions or God's will and have the best of it. We can't. There's no way we can we can do it and and enjoy it forever. And that is the reason why there are so many mistakes nowadays. That that's the reason why there are so many heartbreaks, heartaches. You see, when when God is saying do this, don't do this. People will always want to do it in their own way. 
then they will be expecting the same blessing of doing it in God's way. It's not possible. It's not possible. Uh, the best way to get God's blessings is do it in God's way. So I think we're God's, I hope and I believe by God's grace, I'm going to write a book about it so that people can see it also and uh, learn and um, learn how to do things in God's way. Marriage and love. Now I have two books on my mind. Love and marriage now. Love is the first book, then the second one is on marriage, by the grace of God. So, I hope that when it is also time, God will inspire me, he will give me all everything I need to really write it. Because I've noticed that when something is time in my life, it will just come. I will just be overwhelmed with it. I will just say, okay, I want to do it right now. You understand and the way to do it will just come and I will just be totally convinced and totally pushed to do it. Just like this video, this coming to video tonight. I thought that some days I've not been coming on video. I didn't even feel like but tonight I just felt the real urge, the real strength to come and I know that God wants me to come. So so that's what I'm saying. So when it is real time to write this book, everything will work out for good. Everything will work out for good. And that's one thing I want to encourage us about. Let us learn to always wait on God's time. At times we are we are always too impatient and we are like, oh God, why? Oh God, why? Why can't it just happen now? You don't know what God is planning. We are not we are not the one that is overseeing all the world affairs. It is God. You understand? Everything happening around the world now. None of it is behind God. When people say some things, maybe some kind of prophecies and and uh, if you, you are you as a child of God, you go back to the word of God and you see this prophecy, you see that it's not going to work. But you understand? That means even their prophecies cannot stand against the word of God. You get it? The word of God stands forever. So there's nothing that is happening that God doesn't know about. You know, even if the situation is 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 unpleasant, God still knows about it. The only thing is just make sure you are praying and you are waiting on the Lord. It will turn situations around at the right time. So, that said and said. So now we are going into the topic. I I accept. How do I put it? I welcome comments. When I say comments, I can increase what I want to say. And if there are no comments, no problem. I'll just do it for doing sake and reposting it on my other social media. So, so thank you. Yeah, you see, to start, I'm going to say that marriage is from God. Marriage is from God. No matter whom you are, <clears throat> no matter your religion, no matter anything, no matter your kind of mentality, no matter what you believe in, if you want to go into marriage, if you want marriage, then you have to believe in your mind that it is from God. It is not woman's thinking it is not your feelings or your affection that make people to go into marriage it is from god then another fact i wanted to know about marriage is that marriage is for life marriage is a union where two people go together with the agreement of being responsible for each other for life those vows people take on their wedding day they are real vows. They are not just there to for you to just say and say and don't fulfill it. I am taking you as my lawful wedded husband before man and before God. In sickness, in wealth, in riches, everything till death do you pass. That is that is the that is the covenant. Any other thing you do after that covenant you are sinning against god and you can't 
you can't continue sinning and be expecting the the grace of God to abound. He said, how can we continue in sin and expect the grace of God to abound? He said, God forbid. You understand? You can have other kind of relationship with people, not sexually, of course, but because on that day you make covenant that you are going to keep yourself alone for your partner. I don't know. I don't understand why people don't take these words so seriously. But they are not ordinary words. They are serious words. They are words full of power. Even God says that if you cannot, if you cannot fulfill your vow or covenant, don't bother to go into it. I'm so much surprised how a lot of married men married get married today and they have other women outside. When you actually went to the altar to make covenant before God. Or do you think these things are just ordinary words of mouth? They're not ordinary words of mouth. They're real. God is, God is, God has eyes on it. You understand? God is seeing it. God is, is God hides his own it. And anybody that sins against, he's going to punish that person. Even if the law of the government or the law of anything does not punish you. God himself will punish you. He knows how to do it. You understand? So, that's another thing I want us to know about it. Is that marriage is from God and the marriage is meant to be for life. If you know that you can't be faithful to this person. If you know that you don't love this person. If you know that you don't have everything that it takes to live a lifetime with this person, to live the rest of your life with this person, they don't go into marriage with that person. A lot of people that go into marriage, they're just looking at the present. Sometimes I think, is it that people are actually going into marriage to just test people like, okay, let me see if it will work then, they divorce again, marry and that person divorce again. Sometimes I think like that, that, is that their purposes of really going into marriage or are they just, let me just go into marriage? I don't know, but for whatever reason people are going into marriage for, the real reason we should go into marriage for should be God's reasons for marriage. And that's what we are going to be talking about today. You see, like I said, marriage is from God. And I said that marriage is meant to be for life. There's a place in the Bible that, um, what's his name? Paul was saying that he wished that a lot of people will be single like him. But he said, if you cannot hold your body, then get married. Instead of messing around. I would say that another reason for going into marriage is so that you can stay faithful to just one person. You understand? Because moving from one person to another person, another person, it's really something very dirty. Something that is supposed to be private to you and just one person God has given to you. You are sharing it and everybody is seeing it. Everybody is having access to it. It's, it's not good. God doesn't like it. You understand? It's sinful. So get married and have just one person. You are faithful to one person who you see each other together. You see each other's private and everything. And the Bible says Adam and Adam and Eve were both naked and they were not ashamed. You understand that person you can open that can know about your secrets and everything and you're not ashamed to reveal whom you really are to this person. So so marriage is is uh, from God, and it's it's God's way of making someone faithful, like being committed, being open to a particular person, and you are not ashamed of it. You understand? You the person knows you totally, knows you completely. You. The person you share your life with, you share your private with, even your private part, your private body, everything. You understand? That's one of God's plans for marriage. But 
we can't say marriage is only for sex alone. You understand? We, we, we can't conclude like that because we still have a lot of people today that are getting married for sex and other things are still lying behind in the marriage without being under control. So we can't just say it's only for sex alone. But to, uh, what I would just say about that aspect is that it's for us to stay faithful to just one person. You understand? Marriage makes us faithful to one person alone. You understand? It makes us committed. How do I really put that in English? Is English really faithful to be opened to just one person alone? You understand? Marriage is... Don't, don't, it's also, that's why marriage... A uh, man marrying more than one wife is... It's not God's will, you understand? It's supposed to be just one person. Just one person will have access to your body. Just one person will have access to your private. Just one person will have access to your secrets. Your inner, inner, you understand? Feelings, we have access to your feelings. We have access to your emotions. We have access to your... I don't know how to really put it. By using these emotions, I know there are times we have emotions towards other people, but... You get what I'm trying to say? This, the real one, the inner one, you understand? The inner one, the most intimate. Okay, now let me use the word intimate. The most intimate part of you, just for one person. You understand? So that is it. Then I'm going to start from Genesis to discuss God's plans and purpose for marriage. Because we need to know it so that we don't just go into marriage because we, we are seeing people just going into marriage. A lot of people are going into marriage nowadays because their friends are getting married. Oh, my friend is getting married. When is your own? People are not even concerned about, oh, uh, how is your life? How is your family? How is your dreams? What are your purposes in life? What they will ask you next is, when are you getting married? I remember one time we were... We went for, how do I put it, is it church work or something? We went from church to work somewhere. Church members, you understand? For, is it teamwork I would call it? I don't even know how to call it. You understand? And one little woman in the vehicle was like, ah, all of us that are not yet married, should we go and pray and, and we will get married by fast, by very fast. So I said, ah. Mommy, why don't you use the same energy to pray that God should give us good job? <laughs> you understand? You see that it's some a lot of people are not even worried about your career. They're not worried about your purpose. They're not worried about you having job, having money. What they are worried about is, oh, your friend is getting married. When are you getting married too? And this is putting a lot of prayers on people. And they'll be like, oh, my Magbaja, Magbaja has married. Tamed was married. Their times are different and their purposes are different. There are some people that it is when they get married that they are most fulfilled. You understand? But for you, you you know you don't know God's plans for your life. Or let me say sometimes you can know little of it, but sometimes we we, we sometimes we don't know it yet unless we get to that point. Or let me say sometimes, or let me just say sometimes the plans are different from one another. It's not everybody that that will be a speaker like me. Not everybody. That's fact. Not everybody has the chance to study a particular course first and then continue to another one like me, without marriage, without marry, and eh, without being married first. Not everybody has that strength or. Grace, or I don't even know the language to call it. Not everybody has that. But you just have to recognize God's plans and God's purpose for you. And just follow through like that. That is how to live a fulfilled life. So, we can't, because somebody is getting my own, somebody is getting engaged and say, oh, me too, I want to get engaged. What I want you to know is that everybody is not the same. That man who is getting her engaged is different from that person, another man you are going to meet. And that's one thing I have been talking about for some time now that marriage is not fantasy. It is not 
um, fake or some things you just imagine. You have to be with the real person in front of you. You have to be sure I am with someone, someone that I really know. You understand? Because many people are just getting married nowadays to people they barely know, people they don't even know. You understand? And it's a lot of stress when it gets into the marriage. You understand? Marriage is reality. What is happening between another girl and another boy cannot be the same thing that will happen between you and another boy. Even if that boy is to be switched with you, you are going to build another kind of relationship. The relationship will always be different from one person to another. So that's why, that's why falling in love with the real person is very important. Because that is how you can go far. That is how you can work together. Someone you don't know. How do you know how to come into the person's life? How do you know how to affect or mingle or combine with that person? It's not easy to do and it's not even possible. So, and there's nothing to rush about. If the person is finding it difficult to open up to you, that means you have to wait. There's nothing to rush about. There's nothing like, oh, I want to now, I want to now. I remember one time, one boy was always saying, oh, a lot of people that have proposed at the same time, they are married. You, when are you going to reply? Me, we are different. Of course we are different. You understand? And it was always like, we have to marry now. We have to marry now. Ah, ah. You didn't even give me time to know you. You didn't give me time to understand you. You didn't give me time to work with you. You didn't give me time to even know what I'm going into the marriage to do. You need to know what you're going into the marriage to do. Are you going into the marriage to help this person's career? Are you going into the marriage to lose your own life decisions, life um, ambitions, which is not God's purpose for us? You can't have you, you can't have been living some years in your life only to get every stage of our life that we have been there preparing us for the better so none of it should should overlook i mean should overrun another one you can't you can't overrun how do i use this english you can't overwrite those years you have been spending in your life, putting much effort, putting much things into it, only for you to get into marriage and lose everything at once. No, no, no. It's not really right. It's not really... It's not really right. You understand? Let me see. What is this something meant for? Oh, it's for invitation. I don't see anybody now. Okay, I don't see anybody to invite. So, so that is it. So it's not it's not meant for that. It's not meant for losing all your ambition, losing all your plans, losing all your dreams, or even things that you have built for many years. Marriage should not destroy them. I remember one time. I was already here then. So <laughs> one time, one boy was like, "Are you comes to Nigeria and?" Come and get married to me. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> this thing, do you know how many years I've been waiting to start it? And do you want me to just lose it? Ah, I cannot come and destroy what I have been building for years. Marriage, a lot of women, once they hear, ah, I will marry you. It looks as if that is the end and the beginning of, of life. As if that is everything. Fine, the joy of getting married is there. The joy of that wedding day is there. But you you need to be prepared for what you are going into. You need to be prepared for marriage. You you can't you can't say because of wedding day alone. You can't say you want to go into marriage because of the joy of the wedding day alone. It is not really perfect like that. It is not really nice. It's not beautiful like that. Because the wedding day is just for one day. No matter the elaborateness of the wedding. Congratulations. They will not come and stay with you and live with you with that man. 
even if many of them are the ones they will leave you to your problems or solution or anything that you are facing in the marriage none of them will come and be saying oh this is how you should solve it or they will be leaving with you and should be teaching you okay now be this is where you should go with all that because it's personal thing you are open to this person you are he knows your intimate intimacy intimate art like art to heart talk <laughs> I remember that my friend again you understand he knows the art to heart of you you understand and you know the heart of heart of him that is intimacy intimacy <laughs> intimacy between the two of you so it's not really the sex alone a lot of sex is just anything i don't know i don't know people rate sex so high nowadays like i know it's something very high but what i mean by people rate it too high is because the reason why i said so is because i, I think anybody can have sex with anybody without love nowadays with what the world is turning into i know it's not right but according to what the world is turning into we see a lot of people have sex anyhow, and there's no affection, there's no love, there's no commitment, there's no genuity, there's no nothing, nothing, no respect. So that's why I said well, sex is not really the main thing. And you know one thing about this sex is that once your your moons is calm, you you will not even you won't feel anything again. You understand? That is to tell you that once everything is gone, you will be left with yourself. You will be left with how much you have built with this person. You will be left with what do you really have for this person. Is it real love? Is it commitment? Is it respect? Is it kindness? Is it is it just is it just someone I just want to use to calm down my nerves? So that's what I'm trying to say. We can't we can't say the main re the only reason we want to go into marriage is sex alone because that's not god's will alone for us fine god wants us to procreate like recreation like building he said we should go and be fruitful and multiply that's god's will for us but at the same time there are still more reasons there are still more purposes of god planned for us into marriage Maybe things would not have been this difficult if Adam and Eve did not sin. But when Adam and Eve sinned, the sin came into the world. So life has been difficult since then. So we have been battling between God's purposes and devils. So sometimes the devil wants to bring in his own way into people's relationship, people's lives, so that God's purpose will not be fulfilled. So that is the reason why sometimes God's purposes is clear before our eyes but at the same time the devil's way and the devil's way of destroying it is also lingering around but today we want to talk about the way of the law so that we don't fall into the devil's path because the devil's path can be it leaves someone life with um, regret pain shame you understand unhappiness but god's way will give you happiness it will give you peace it will give you true true i don't know what is english is that though because i say we'll be speaking your about sometimes it will give you <laughs> it will give you the true fulfillment the true purpose the i don't know it will give you everything the right thing, those desires, those fantasies that are in our head. Whenever we think about marriage, those things we are looking out for that is making many of us rush into marriage. It is only when you do it in God's way. You have the right purpose, you are doing it how God wants you to do it. That is when you will enjoy that fantasy that you are feeling in your head. But if you want those things to be fulfilled, then you have to wait on the Lord. Then you have to do it God's way. Then you have to to walk in the path of God. 
you can't say oh i want to get married to this person because of shape and breasts and uh, all these things alone without considering other things what of other purposes god wants us to get married what of other things we are going to be facing inside the marriage let's leave sex alone out of this let's leave it alone out of it because if it's sex alone you want there are many people that can give you free sex there are many people that are ready to even do that with you and nowadays because they're seen in the world and because um many things attacks people are wicked you understand we can't say uh, the only reason we want to go into marriage alone is to have children what about other things there are other things there are other purposes so don't say oh just because i want to uh, bear mrs so 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 that is the reason i want to go into marriage with this person oh because this man is a rich man oh if i can just marry this man now They'll be calling me chief missus. Oh, because the man is rich. A lot of women have tried it and they are failed. There's a particular... There are many people. I won't say just one person. But there's... there's marriage can be defined as whatever by man. A woman started from primary school. Argue for assignments. Current is like the other one. We got the other later. I both come out with laughter. Hmm... Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. Even though, even though you, you twisted it, I don't even understand it, but thank you. So, like, I'm, like I was saying, marriage is, is not just for giving birth alone. Because nowadays we have a lot of children that are very unhappy. Children that are going through some traumas, emotional trauma, because of how their parents are living. You understand? So you can't just say you want to get married to someone just because you want to have a child. One of one of one reasons of marriage is to work together, to do things together. The person you want to get married to, you must be able to do things with this person. Not sex. Please, when I'm talking about doing things with someone, let's remove sex. Sex is just there. This thing should come first. You must be able to talk with someone. You must be able to really know someone. Because marriage makes you committed to someone for life. For life. Throughout your life. That is, the, that is why those vows are being said. They are to bind you together. God is binding you together in that place. So you must meet up with God's purpose of going into the marriage. So that you don't wish to go out of the marriage again. Even after you have gotten married to this person. You must be fulfilled in yourself. Two people that are fulfilled going into marriage to be more fulfilled. One will chase a thousand. That means... Before you even get married to this person, you have started something with your life. Before you get married to this person, you are already a fulfilled person. You are already an old person. You are not going into marriage with someone to complete you. No, you are going into marriage to work with someone else who is also complete. So if you are going into marriage on complete, you might not fulfill God's purpose for marriage. You may not. You may not. I'm telling you the truth. You may not fulfill God's purpose for marriage. So there's nothing to rush about into marriage. Then I want to say another thing. There was one post I posted some time ago that I was like, I don't really have the answer to this. So I want to talk about it. And that is, the question was, is it compulsory you marry somebody who sent you to school? Because a lot of people nowadays will be like, oh, somebody took care of her, spent money for her to school and when she went to the school she met other people and left this man and now the man is saying he must marry her you see i'm going to talk about this 
with inspiration from God, inspiration and some intelligence. Because the question is not just a yes or no answer, it's with explanation. You see, when you when you are doing something for someone and you're actually doing it from a true heart, you are doing it from a heart that really cares. Sometimes, most times, you are not doing it because you want anything from it. That is the truth. You are just doing it and you are leaving the reward for God. So if you as a man or as a lady, you have taken care of a man and the man decided not to marry you, you still don't lose your reward. You didn't lose your reward. Your reward is with God. Saying that compulsorily he must marry you is like sometimes someone okay, how do we how will you feel when he eventually marries you and he doesn't give you the real happiness you want in your life? You're not going to like it. And for someone who has promised you that, oh don't worry, I'm going to get married to you, and he eventually leaves you after you have spent all your money, spent everything for this person. That is to tell you that that person is evil. That person is ungrateful. He doesn't even know what he wants. And we always do things like that. Even the person he's claiming he's getting married to. Do you still know the future of that person with that with the other person? We still do another thing that will prove his real behavior to that person. So you can't just say because somebody you spend money for someone and then the person decided to leave you so because of that you the person is entitled to your you want to do evil to the person don't do evil to someone because that is their real behavior that is their real behavior it means that person is such an ungraceful person and do you know one thing about this life is that this life is always turning that person who lives today we still one day turn again and meet you Probably to need your help or something. This life is just turning. You understand? One way or the other, you will still meet again. The person will still want to ask for your favor in another time. But this time, you already know whom they are. So when God is trying to reveal whom people are to you, don't say, oh, he must stay with me. Oh, he must be with me. Oh, he must be mine. Don't, 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 don't. He must stay with me. What if God is just trying to show you whom this person really is? What are you going to do? What are you going to How do you want to cope with that kind of man or kind of that kind of woman in marriage? Because marriage is is combination. You see, when I watch the video of um how life is formed in the womb of a woman, how egg and sperm they are formed, and I was seeing it like it's real connection. When sperm is released into a female, um, I'm going to use the real words now. First, it gets into the vagina. You understand? From that vagina, some of the sperm cells die. You understand? When it gets into the cervix, the cervix is the opening to the womb. When it gets into the cervix, some of them are still destroyed. You understand? When it gets into the womb, some are still destroyed. But some still continue to grow, to go forward. Then when it gets to the fallopian tube, some are still destroyed on the road, on the way. Some cannot even go further, you understand? Then, until... That's why it, it's difficult for many people to get pregnant. Because the process is long. If some some sperm cells cannot swim that far. They get destroyed on the way. You get? So it's it's a it's only a miracle from God. You get. So when it gets to the, when they eventually get to the entrance of the ovary to get to the um egg to be fertilized by the egg. 
the first one that is able to penetrate a lot of them are attached to the egg at the same time that's those ones that will that still have the strength to get to that place just one it's it's able to get inside and it fuses you understand it fuses so much that you won't even see this palm again it fuses like real connection and becomes one so others other sperm cells are destroyed and it produces some kind of toxins that destroys and and covers the ovary so much that other sperm cells cannot come in again that is that is what marriage is meant for it's a real real connection real real bonding bonding to form something tangible not rubbish a lot of marriage today they're just combined to form nonsense but that's not god's purpose marriage should combine two people together to form something more beautiful to form something that can destroy ten thousands you understand so it's not just two people coming together to form rubbish so just let's remove that from our mind when we are talking about marriage let me move from my mind that it's just anybody. Anybody. You can't get married to anybody and fulfill God's purpose for marriage. You must be sure that this person is able to fuse with you, to form something tangible. You must be that's why we have courtship. That's why we have relationship. A lot of people call it different names, courtship, dating, friendship, many things like that. That's why you have those kind of things before you get into marriage. You must combine with this person. You must bond. You must connect. You understand? Fine. You don't have the total connection yet. But at least to some extent, you should know each other. You should be able to combine and connect in some ways. You understand? So definitely it. Thank God. So, so that is it. So let's go and remove that mind of oh. My friends are getting my soul. It's my own turn now. It's fine. It's your own turn. But is it God's time for you also? The Bible says we are written. He writes us on the palm of his hand. That means every, every of our life is already in God's plan. And it's, he has them in plan. Is it God's plan for you at that time? Is it really God's plans for you? Is he the right person? Is the person really, really concerned about your future? Sometimes many people just get married to some unfinished product. How do you, how do you, how do you feel when something is not ripe yet and you are taking and you have to live with this person for the rest of your life? How will you feel? How are you going to cope? When you eat an unripe fruit, do you feel good? Well, uh, do you feel better eating it than when you eat the ripe one? You understand what I'm saying? That is to tell you that sometimes you have to wait. Sometimes someone is right for you, but they don't have all the trainings yet. They don't have all it takes to be your husband or to be your wife yet. You have to wait. If you want to really enjoy the marriage and if you want to really fulfill God's purpose for that marriage, you get it. There's no big deal in waiting. Many people are just worried. Oh, somebody will take her away. Oh, somebody will snatch her away. That person you are so worried about that somebody will take away. When you get married to this person, are you still sure somebody will not take the person away from you? A lot of girls are just so giving themselves a kind of a lot of stress, a lot of a lot of things like that. You understand? I just like, oh, somebody will snatch this boy. You start doing all sorts of things, messing themselves up just to keep a man. You don't need all these kind of things. You don't need it. You don't need it. The person that, that is ripe and is God's will for you, we see those virtues in you also. Those are the things God wants you to wait for. I know we have our our minds, or how do I put it? We have those things that we really want. That's true. But at the same time, God's plans for us is greater. God's purpose for us is greater. You understand? 
For someone like me, let me put this. Let me just because today I wrote something on my Instagram. So let me just share it. You see, for some times in my life, now I can remember. It was even maybe it's today or maybe a few days ago that I started thinking about it. I remember one time, one Muslim guy <laughs> was approaching me for marriage. He was ready for marriage, of course. I felt like, my God, why? Why would a Muslim guy be the one to be attracted to me? I'm not a Muslim. I'm a Christian. I'm a, I'm a devoted Christian. What are you talking about? Like, really? Seriously? And I just told him, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a Christian. I can't marry a Muslim. Then when I go to this place, I think those guys that have been so much attracted to me that come close to me to do something for me. I've had Christians too, but those ones that really do things that touch my heart, they have been Muslims. And I'm just like, what are they seeing that is attractive about me? Like, I don't understand. What is wrong with my view that is Muslim that is seeing me? And, and you understand? Fine. It's not everybody that I have that kind of attraction or Toward, or I don't even know what language to call it now. You know, everybody that I have those kind of attractions, but those ones that really do things. You know, I was just, I was just recently I was just thinking about it. That it's like God has been preparing me for this for a long time. That I I have just always, and God has been trying to show me. Okay, you need to calm down. You need to. So God has to take me through some lessons to really. Calm down and uh, thank you so much, Mr. Aziz. To really calm down to understand that it's not just the you understand to really calm down and associate with Muslims. You understand, you get what I'm trying to say. So, so that's it, and uh. It's it's something I, I couldn't do for a very long time. And I'm I'm so surprised that the person I'm calling my friend, my best friend now, is a Muslim. It's it's surprising to me. But I had to go through the lesson. I had to go through the lesson. So sometimes the person you are worried about that, ah, I want to marry this person. Oh, is this person I must marry? The person has not gone through the lesson yet. The person has not gone through the process that God wants the person to go through. So how can you how can you marry somebody who is not ready for I mean who is not prepared, who is not fit for you the journey, for the journey ahead of you? You must wait. And if nobody takes her away, fine. God has replacements every time. And if you want to bring the person back, you will still bring the person back at the time that he has trained the person well. But the thing is, you must be sure that you are doing it in God's way. We can't totally rule out God's purpose uh, for marriage and be expecting to have a good home. It's getting cold again. You can realize this one now. Get cold, get warm at the same time. You understand? We can't rule out God's purpose. Even those children that you are saying that you want to go into marriage or you want to marry somebody because you want to give birth, you still need to take care of these children together. You can't say you want to just have a child. You're going to cause a lot of damage for these children, how they think, how they, you understand? Because many of them will lack, um, the child and um, the fatherly love or maybe the motherly love, things like that. You understand? So you can't just say it's because you want to just give birth alone. And you can't say it's because you just want somebody to take care of your needs because of money alone. It's really not wise. So it's mainly... So I will just conclude by saying that marriage is for... Two people going into marriage to work together, to do things together, to chase 10,000s together, 
So it is two whole people, two complete people. Your complete is complete. You have been, you have both gone through the lessons God wants for you to come together, and you are coming together to form something tangible. It's not something rubbish. This one, look at look at how it's fixed now. It's something we can use to do a shubare. You understand? It's tangible. But when we have tried to form something like oh, this one too says another uh -huh, This one is the shuba. I don't know, sir. I want to try to form something that doesn't really make sense. Okay, let's do this now. You see, some marriages are like this. Anything can just sweep this thing away. It's not combined. It doesn't even make sense. It cannot form anything. Or oh, maybe I should not even use that they safe. You understand? Some people are not combined together. Nothing is joining them. This person is moving towards this area. This person is moving towards this area. Nothing is is in between them. Nothing is joining them together. They are not combined. It's just like like some illustrations that um Pastor Lukoya did. He said, How can aunt Get married to elephant. Some marriages are like that. The man is so high, or maybe it's the woman that is so high, and the man is just there. You, you just because you want somebody by all means, you just want to marry, you just want to marry. You always have problem. You can even say you want to do something for this man and we pull you down. You didn't wait for this man to have all these lessons. You didn't wait for this man to to really have the fulfillment, have you? To be fulfilled on its own, so that when you come together, you do things together. Marriage is not supposed to be stressful. It's not supposed to be with pain. It's not supposed to be with um, sadness, unhappiness. That is not God's purpose for marriage. Marriage is supposed to be with joy, fulfillment, peace, love. You understand? It should give you kindness. Because the Bible says two are better than one. And two are better than one when the two are right for each other. One plus one equals to one. Because when sperm and ovum comes together and the egg comes together, it forms one thing. If you watch that video, you understand what I'm trying to say. It forms just one thing and you won't even see the difference. And immediately the whole body of that woman becomes... Uh, um changes towards that reaction that reaction that is taking place at that moment that that sperm enters into the ovary to form to form with the egg a body reacts immediately she produces a lot of toxins to to make a uh, sperm not to be able to go in into that place again you understand That is marriage. That is marriage. In fact, all these things we are seeing that explaining many things to us, many spiritual things to us that we need to understand. You understand? So, I don't remember what I want to say. So, like I was saying, so, um, anybody that you are able to do something for and the person still didn't marry you, it's not a problem. It's just God revealing whom that person is to you. And if you are doing anything for someone, do it for someone because you are doing it for God. Do it, do it because you are doing it for God. That is why I don't advise girls to make themselves hope to prove love to a man. You don't have to do it. You don't have to make yourself hope for a man because you will feel the pain later in life. A lot of girls that get abortion because they want to keep a man that do many things, you understand? And then when their womb get destroyed, they will be like, oh, this man is evil, he should marry me, he should do this. No, it's not right, you understand? You should take decisions for yourself. Don't live your life to... How do I put it? Don't live your life like, like half... Don't live your life like you are incomplete without someone. Allow God to work on you, to be a complete person. 
Then when you are complete, that is when you can join in with another person to form completeness. Okay, now I remember what I wanted to say. So another reason why God created marriage is to be of help meet to someone, to each other. Not just the woman being help me to the man alone. No. Man is help me to the woman. Woman is help me to the man. Those needs in the woman's life, the man will meet them. Those ones that she cannot meet, the man will meet them. Not just money this time around. Because anytime I talk about these things, people have this kind of mentality of money or sex. Those are the two things people are... Those are the two reasons people are getting married nowadays. Because of money, because of sex. No. No. If it's just money, anybody can give anybody money. Anybody can give anybody sex. Although it's sin, but we see it nowadays that sex is becoming something that anybody is just getting free of charge. Even sometimes they pay for it, but what I mean is without any commitment, without fulfillment of God's purpose for marriage, they just do it. Although it's sin, and it's not how God plans it, but it's not a good reason to go into marriage. You understand? So, like I was saying, it's to take care of someone. You have to be there for this person. You have to be there for this person. A lot of people, when they get married to someone, they'll be like, oh, he's not doing anything again. He does not have a job again. He does not have money again. Oh, I'm not happy there again. I'm not this again. That's why I talked about. You must be fulfilled. You must know your calling. You must know what you are meant for before you even go into the marriage. Because once you are going into the marriage, being a complete person, that is when you will be able to impact someone else's life. The battery is low. That is when you will be able to impact another person's life. But when you are going into marriage with the mentality that you are not complete, you won't be able to manifest or do something for someone else you can't do it when god created if she was complete she was perfect you understand that is the reason why she was able to be a real help meet for Adam. and Adam also was complete he was perfect so he was able to impact they were able to impact into each other's life that is what marriage is meant for because you are going to go far you are not going to it's not for one day it's not for few days it's not for a few weeks not for a few years for the rest of your life as long as god gives you chance to live you understand so thank you i hope i've done what god wants me to do today so i'm grateful to god for that i appreciate everyone that has come online so thanks for the comments um i appreciate mr aziz and uh, Newman, thanks so much. Good night. So if there's anything you want me to talk about that I've not talked about, you can write it in my inbox or comments. Sometimes I don't read the comments. <laughs> but any idea, I just write it one way, somewhere, somewhere, so that I'll see it. Thank you. Have a wonderful night and happy Sunday in advance. And I want to tell you that God is already working on this um, pandemic that is going on. So, it's like a lot of people are praying already. And God is, has started working. So, if we complete it by God's grace and everything will go back to normal. And I pray that by God's grace, when everything goes back to normal, we will have more testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's going to be with 